have you here today. I hope all of you are excited to be in this session and learn new things about goals today. So, you know, a lot of us want many things in our lives, but we tend to settle based on where we are and what is around us. Put one in the chat if you know that you can do better, but you aren't. So today I'd like to know, you know, that I'd like you to know that you can get whatever you want. So I'll be showcasing Bob Proctor's video that will give you a deep insight about goals. You know, most of us are familiar with setting goals based on what we already know. But today I'm excited to show you a new and different way to think about what it is that you want. Today's session forms part of a system called Thinking into Results. So Thinking into Results is a system that has been created by Bob Proctor. So some of you may know his story, some of you may not. Bob Proctor was born during the World War II and he rose from a situation of debt and poverty into massive wealth. Now, how did that happen? It took him nine years to discover that what you want is already here. You just need to raise your awareness. Now, isn't that great, guys? So what you want is already here. All you need to do is just raise your awareness. He put together this knowledge into the system called thinking into results for ordinary people like me and you to implement in our lives. So thinking into results helps people like me and you to get what it is that we want. So before we work on expanding our awareness, we must be clear on what it is that we exactly want. So this is the first step in thinking into results that helps us do that. So for all of you that are on call uh, via Zoom, you should, have, you should have received the workbook that I shared earlier via email. So I hope you guys have it open because we'll be referring to it during this workshop. So this is a quote by Earl Nightingale. I love this quote. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Earl was Bob's mentor from whom he learned the secrets of the mind. So, you know, a lot of us are working towards certain things in life and we think that we are only successful once we have achieved that certain thing. But guys, I'd like you to know that no matter what progress you are making, you're still succeeding. Because success is in progressing towards our goal and not just in achieving it. You know, we tend to give ourselves a hard time because you know we get so hung up on where we are as opposed to focusing on where we are going. So, you know, we keep telling ourselves that I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing too well. But as long as you are progressing towards your goal, that is still considered success. So imagine, you know, if you're trying to climb Mount Everest and all your guide does is keep giving you a hard time, you're definitely not going to have a good time, isn't it? You're not going to enjoy the climb at all. So achieving your goals is meant to be fun. You know, you're supposed to be having fun. So it's a progressive process. So as long as you are getting up every day and you are taking some action towards your goal, then you are already successful. The fact that you have a goal sets you apart from most people. I'm not saying it, it makes you better than anybody. No, it doesn't make you better than anybody, but it still sets you apart because most people don't even have goals. So some of you may not even have a goal, but your goal gets revealed to you with time. So today I want to make that clear for you. You know, what is a goal? Most people don't even understand the concept correctly. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. Then I'll talk about how to move towards it. So this is a very exciting lesson because 
you know, it gets you fired up about your future and what's going to happen. So I hope everyone's excited. So a few questions that you need to consider. The first question, are my current goals making me excited and energized? So, you know, guys, it's very important for you to know that your goals should always excite you. You know, if your goals don't excite and inspire you, then they're definitely not the right goals. Then the next question is, do my goals belong to me or do they belong to somebody else? Now, you know, often to feel better, people step behind others and support others' goals as opposed to having their own goals. Now, now really, really think about that, guys, because I'm sure a lot of us here are already doing that. You know, it's very easy to avoid setting your own goals. Put a three in the chat if you can relate to this. Put a number three. I'd like to see if uh, all of you can relate to this or not. So you have to realize something. You're a goal-seeking human being. Humans want to grow. You know, our mind is an automatic goal-seeking mechanism. You know, it's constantly seeking out a target. And that's why most people don't know where they're really going every day. You know, they're just wandering around and they don't have any crystal clear direction as to where they're really going. So to avoid putting themselves on the line, people find it easier to adopt somebody else's goals. So, you know, what do we do? We simply just hide behind somebody else's goal. It's, it's very easy, isn't it? Really think about it. And then the next question is, what do I really, really want? So this is a great question that Bob always asks. You know, Bob Proctor always asks, what it is that you really want? Really, really think about it. So ask yourself, what do I really want? You know, when your paradigms are strong, they won't even let you entertain the idea of recognizing what it is that you really want. Bob always said, people know exactly what they want, but they spend so much time ruling it out that they don't even know what they want. So they do know what they want, but their paradigms stop them from knowing what it is that they really want. So it's a good idea to keep asking yourself that question. What it is that I really want? Now I mentioned paradigms. So guys, I just want to mention what paradigms mean for some of you that might not have an idea what it is. So paradigms are basically your habitual behaviors that you have developed over time that prevent you from doing different things in your life. So what they do is they get you into a pattern of doing the same things repeatedly. Now, what happens when you do things repeatedly? You keep getting the same results, isn't it? You don't get different results when you do the same things over and over again. So that's what your paradigm is. By building those daily habits, you know, around certain things, you're doing things in the same way. So you keep getting the same results. Now, whenever you introduce a new idea into your mind, the first thing that your paradigm does, that it draws a fight, it puts up a fight. Because the job of your paradigm, guys, is to keep you where you want to, where you are. It wants to keep you comfortable. It doesn't want you to grow. So that's exactly what it does. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put up uh, Bob's training. So I hope you guys are excited. I'm just going to share my uh, screen. So just give me one second. I'm just going to reshare my screen. Just give me one minute and I'll just put up the video. Hello there and welcome. I want to congratulate you for taking part in this program, Thinking Into Results. Do you know, you probably think this just has to do with your work, but it really doesn't. This has to do with your family. It has to do with your social life, your health. It has to do with your life. I began studying this material close to 50 years ago. My life has changed so dramatically. I, uh, I live in a healthy body. I'm happy. I'm wealthy. I have friends all over the world. And I, I have business all over the world. And it's all because of this material. You have absolutely no idea where this is going to take you. 
And when we talk about results, let's understand this. It's what we think that ultimately manifests as results. And that may seem like a bit of an exaggeration or maybe even a fairy tale to you at this point. But as you start to study it, you're going to realize it's not an exaggeration and it's not a fairy tale. It's real. So take this program seriously. Your leaders are going to give you something that you're going to be grateful for for the rest of your life. I, uh, I am forever grateful every day to have this information. Because you see, I'm in charge of me. I'm in charge of my world. And you're going to take charge of your world. You'll no longer be a victim of circumstance or a victim of any kind. Because you're going to take responsibility for your life and the results you get. We never have to blame. We never have to look at anybody else. And we're in control of how we think, how we feel, how we act. And therefore, the results we get. You're going to start loving how you spend your days when you've got thinking into results in your pocket and in your mind. Enjoy it. Hello, I'm Sandy Gallagher, your partner on this journey, thinking into results. When I first met Bob Proctor, I was already a successful business attorney, and I thought my life couldn't get much better, but it did. My life has expanded dramatically. I've learned a lot from Bob since we first met. He got me to shift my thinking and see the relationship of my mind to my behavior and my results. Bob Proctor is widely considered one of the greatest teachers in the world on the topic of human potential and growth. He's worked with many of the top companies around the world, from banks to airlines to insurance companies to computer giants like IBM. Working with Bob generates phenomenal results. One of the most valuable concepts that Bob taught me is the importance of setting goals. Not just any goal, not a goal you know how to achieve. I'm talking about a goal, a dream, a vision, something you think, something you know, in fact, is beyond your experience today. Because the true purpose of a goal is to help you grow in your awareness of yourself and of your team. What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? Let's see how you can begin thinking in a new and powerful way and begin discovering your true purpose in life. Are you ready? The lesson that we're gonna do right now could have a greater impact on your life than anything else. It certainly did on mine. You receive a little goal card. This is where you sit down and write out what you want on a card. And then you carry it loose in your purse or your pocket. Now on one side we've got here, change is inevitable. But personal growth is a choice, and it is. Do you know that you could wander up and down the streets of any city anywhere in the world and ask one person after another, what is their goal? And they'll look at you, and odds are pretty good they'll say, what do you mean? Yet, if by chance you find someone that has a clearly defined goal, ask if they've got it in writing. And again, odds are pretty good they won't. If you decide what you want, and you write it on the card, and you carry it with you, I guarantee you it must happen. It absolutely must happen in your life. Now, why do we have goals? See, the average individual would say we have a goal to get more. You know, get a better house, get a bigger house, get a boat, get more money. No. That may be a result of the goal. You may, you know, accumulate more in your life and nicer and better things. But the real purpose of a goal is to grow. It causes you to draw something out of yourself that you didn't even know was there. Now, when we set a goal, we're going after something we want. And if you know how to reach it, it's the wrong goal. Now, that probably sounds pretty silly. When you set a goal, you're going after something you want. And if you know how to reach it, it's probably the wrong goal. You're going sideways. I always mention that goals fall into three categories. I refer to it as A, B, and C. A-type goals are doing something you already know how to do. And I use an example in a program that I wrote 
about a young man that came to me and he asked me if I'd talk to him about his goal. And I said, sure, what's your goal? He said, I want to get a new car. And I said, well, that's okay. I said, what kind of a car do you want? He said, a new Pontiac. I said, well, Pontiac's a nice car. I've had a Pontiac. And I said, what are you driving now? And he said, a Pontiac. Really? I said, how long have you had it? And he said, four years. I said, how old is the Pontiac? He said, four years old. And I said, then what you're telling me is that you have had a new Pontiac that you bought four years ago. You bought it new. He said, that's right. And I said, that's not a good goal because you've known for four years how to do that. There's going to be no growth attached to it. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't get a new Pontiac, but it would not constitute a goal. A goal is something that you're going to go after you've never done before. Now, when people move away from A-type goals, they generally go to B-type goals. And that's where they sit down and they gather all the information they've got, all the resources they've got, and they say, if all these things happen, then I could accomplish this. And they make a plan. They've got an absolutely beautiful plan. They've got the plan, and if all these things happen, then I can accomplish this. This is what they think they can do. You see, the A type is what they know they can do. B is what they think they can do. Now, do you know that there's no inspiration in going after something like that? Absolutely none. And if you're going to really accomplish something, you're going to have to be inspired. You're going to have to pull on something that you haven't pulled on before. I mean, it's going to have to come from inside. See, people go after B-type goals. They get going, and they get bored. They're not inspired, and so they quit. They give up. Now, the C-type goal is wants. And what you want, I'm talking about what you really want. Most people say, I don't know what I want. I don't believe that. I think you do know what you want. I think you're rejecting it before you give it any serious thought. To decide what you want, you've got to sit down and totally relax. And then you have to let your imagination wander. When you're going after wants, you're dealing with fantasy. See, the one, you're going after what you know. The other one, you're going after what you think you can do. And the wants is fantasy. Now, we have been conditioned as kids that fantasy is just for little kids. You don't fantasize. You've got to know how things are going to happen. But you see, you and I are the only creature on the planet, so far as we know, that can fantasize. Ed Hillary fantasized that he would stand on top of the world and he climbed Mount Everest. The Wright brothers, a couple of ordinary bicycle mechanics, they fantasized they'd introduce us to a new kingdom, and they did. Now think of this for a moment. What do you fantasize? See, as a little kid, you could fantasize, and your mother and dad let you do that because it got you up under their feet. You'd sit down in front of the kitchen cupboards with pots and pans, and God knows only what you did with it. But then you went to school. Bob, pay attention. You see, your mind's wandering. Will you quit looking out the window and listen to what I'm telling you? And you see, we'd get punished, and pretty soon we stopped fantasizing. We put our imagination away, and we stopped using it. Do you know, Napoleon Hill said the imagination is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known. Don't you find it strange that we have great, huge companies, big multinationals with small creative departments? We have people wandering around and saying, well, I'm not really creative. Writers are creative. Musicians are. But I'm really not creative. Everyone is creative. Creativity comes from the root creator, which is within. Everybody's creative. It's a matter, are you expressing your creativity? Well, don't let people steal your dream. When you sit down and decide what you want, you won't know how you're going to get it. The fun is in finding out how you're going to do it. When I set a goal, if it doesn't sort of scare me, I know I'm on the wrong track. See, if you know how you do it, you're going to go sideways. You've got to build a fantasy. You take the fantasy and you move it from fantasy to a theory. You keep playing with it. And you go from fantasy to a theory. And you take and you build an image. And the, the, just follow the pyramid that we've got here for you. And you turn it into a theory. Now, that is when we're giving our fantasy some serious consideration. We're starting to use our reasoning mind. And we're starting to give this some serious thought. Now, before we can turn the theory into a goal, we have to ask ourselves a couple of things. Am I able to do this? Am I able? Well, if we believe everything we've been taught 
by both science and theology, the only two sources of reference we have to go to. We have deep reservoirs of talent. We have infinite potential. Absolutely, I'm able. I don't know how, but I'm able. The second question we have to ask, am I willing? Am I willing to pay the price? Am I willing to do what I have to do to get to where I'm going? See, Ed Hillary had to go to Nepal in 1951, in 1952, and 1953. No one had ever been to the top of Mount Everest. Everyone in the world told him it couldn't be done. Anybody that tried died. But he kept going back. He was willing to do whatever was required, and he got to the top of that mountain. Have you any idea how those two young bicycle mechanics, the Wright brothers, were ridiculed? Told to quit wasting time? Have you any idea how many times people laughed at Edison when he said what he was going to do? He was going to make this incandescent life. Do you know he failed about 10,000 times? He was willing to do that. See, failing at something doesn't make you a failure. You're only a failure when you stop. You could ask, am I able to do this? Yeah, I'm able. Am I willing? Yeah, I'm willing. I am willing to pay the price. At that second, your theory turns into a goal. Now, as you get emotionally involved in the goal, you're going to find that your emotional involvement is going to change your behavior. Yet you're going to find as your behavior changes, the results start to change. And your theory turns into a fact. And once you reach the goal, it turned into a fact. That puts you in a position to build bigger and better fantasies. Now, let's back up a bit. How do you decide what you want? See, that's a pretty big idea. You've got to sit down as an individual and start writing all your wants down. Make it a shopping list. See, I think there's two goals people should have. They should have a personal goal, and then they should have a corporate goal. You might want to sit down with your, with your peers in your department and say, what could we accomplish in this department? It could be the sales department. It might be as a group, collectively, take the sales to a point that would shock the executives in the company. It could be in the machine shop. Let's make this place the most effective machine shop in the world. It could be in the accounting department. Let's make sure everything's right on tap. They're goals. And as we work towards them, we unify our energies. We work together, but we're working towards a point. See, when people are working towards something, they're alive. If they're just working, they don't have any fun. So we've got to sit down and we've got to decide, what do I really want? And start to make a list. You're capable of doing anything. And what we're really doing is raising our level of conscious awareness. And you're going to find when you decide on the thing on the list that you want more than anything, that becomes the star you're shooting at. That's what's written on the card. That becomes the goal. It might be an income, it might be a position, it might be a new home, it might be a trip. That becomes the goal. Yet that's what you work towards. And you're forever trying to become more effective so you can raise your consciousness and you become aware of how to do it. It's the same in a department. We have a masterminding session, a brainstorming session. How can we make this department more effective than it is? Now, you're going to find possibly someone say, well, I'm not doing that. Well, then that's okay. They're not part of the group. Don't let another person dictate how you're going to live. Don't let conditions or circumstance dictate. It has nothing to do with what's going on outside of you. It's what's going on inside. George Bernard Shaw said that people are always blaming circumstance for where they are. He said, I don't believe in circumstance. The people that get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. So you absolutely refuse to let anything that's going on outside stop you. Do you know, there's a cute story about the Maharashi and yoga, when, when, he was, um, when he was taking his transcendental meditation to the world, um, or planning to, someone asked him, well, where's all the money going to come from? He said, wherever it is right now. <laughs> See, nothing's created or destroyed. If nothing's created or destroyed, everything's already here, if not in one state or another. The way to fly airplanes has always been here. Internet, it's always been here. We just weren't aware of how to do it. And as we raise our conscious awareness, we've got it. Nothing is created or destroyed. All science and all theology have taught us that for years. Now, when we really start to understand that, we live in a notion of motion. We're living in a constant evolution of change. 
But remember when I said personal growth is a choice. You've got to have a goal. You've got to wake up in the morning and get excited. I'm working towards my goal. That's what I'm doing right now as I'm creating this program with you. I'm working towards a goal. I have a business partner, Sandy Gallagher. She wants to build this worldwide, the corporate division. And so that's what we're doing. That's what we're working towards. That's why we're spending time here right now building this program. So help you. See, the only way to reach the goal is to provide greater service. And as you provide greater service, you're going to grow. You're going to move ahead. Things inside of you are going to start to happen. An individual that doesn't have a goal is lost. They don't know where they're going. Can you imagine going on a trip and you don't know where you're going? Somebody say, well, where are you going to go? I don't know. West. Where? I mean, you could be going around the world and just going around the world and around the world. Well, where are you going? I'm going west. Well, when you get there, you still can go west. Imagine driving out of your driveway. You've got no destination. Which way would you turn? You see, we're goal-seeking organisms, every one of us. Have you ever watched a little baby? The baby's goal is to walk. It falls, it bangs its head, it cries, it bleeds, but it doesn't stay down. It gets up and it gets going. I'm pretty saying, it's, look, Ma, I'm walking. Then they get on a bike. And the trick is to balance it, learn how to ride. Pretty soon it's, look, Ma, no hands. But do you know what your goal is? Your goal, your real purpose in life is to grow. You want to sit down and ask yourself, what do you really love to do? That's what you're going to get good at. That's what your purpose is going to be all about. That's what your goal is all about. Move toward what you want. Have a personal goal. Have a corporate goal. Now, your personal goal and your corporate goal in your department should be consistent with the corporate goal that the executive team set. So you want to make sure, as you go towards the big one, that all your little ones will fall into place. And I guarantee you, you'll set something on fire inside of you that there's nothing like it. Goal achievers are productive individuals. They're happy, they're productive, they're prosperous. They're the ones that make the world change. Don't listen to people that tell you why something can't be done. Don't listen to people that tell you the economy is controlling them. You control the economy. You're God's highest form of creation. Steve Bowe, who was a vice president with the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, said one time something that I have never forgot. He said, God's gift to us is more talent and ability than we'll ever hope to use in our lifetime. Our gift to God is to develop as much of that talent and ability as we can in this lifetime. I like that. You might want to take and memorize that. It's done me a lot of good. Now I've shared it with you. Set your goal. Get it on your card. Bury it in your mind. Tell yourself, I'm able and I'm willing, and then go and do it. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate you on taking this first step towards thinking into results. Now that you know a lot more about setting goals, the right kind of goals, what do you do next? You take action, because that's where the learning really begins. Without action, goals are just fantasies. So sit down with your coworkers, take some time and ask them if we had all the resources we needed and there were no limitations or restrictions, what would we want to accomplish together as a department? It's really a great opportunity to collaborate and be creative because everyone wins by coming together for a common goal and everyone soars when those common goals are big, worthy goals. So good luck, and I'll see you at the next lesson. Welcome back, everybody. Put a six in the chat if you got a new perspective around goals today. Great. I'm happy to know that, you know, we are learning something new today. So I think Bob mentioned this quote, quote on the video. 
he said, so Steve Bo says that God's gift to us is more talent and ability than we'll ever hope to use in our lifetime. Our gift to God is to develop as much of that talent and ability as we can in this lifetime. So, you know, we tend to squander the gifts that come to us for free. Now, I'm sure all of you have experienced that. You know, whatever you get for free, you tend to take it for granted, isn't it? So your responsibility is to thank God by developing the talents and abilities given to you while you're here. Now, that's your responsibility. So I discovered that, you know, whatever that it is that you desire, whatever you want or you want to have, you have the ability to carry out. Now, isn't that great news? Because if you didn't have the ability to carry out, you wouldn't have that want in the first place. Now, when I figured that out, it was such a relief to me. So I learned this from my mentor, Bob, that I can develop my talents and abilities and achieve what it is that I desire. Because I would not have the desire in the first place if I wasn't able to do it. So, you know, some people get scared that they, they don't have a seagull. So I think you heard Bob talk about a seagull, that it should be what you fantasize. It's what you really, really want. So, you know, people say that, you know, it's like I've never climbed a hill. Now, how am I supposed to climb Mount Everest? We overwhelm ourselves with these goals. But just remember, guys, a goal is simply something that you are going after that you've never done before. That's the definition of a goal. As long as you're heading somewhere and working on something, trying to accomplish something, achieving something, creating something, as long as that's something you've never done, that's the definition of a goal. And then the purpose of a goal is designed to help you grow. So by going after something that you've never done before, it causes you to grow and it causes you to draw something from yourself that you, you didn't even know was there. So if you have some wants, whatever you want, you must know that you have the ability to carry out. Because if you didn't have the ability to carry out in the first place, you not even have that want. So by going after these goals, it causes you to draw something that you have, but you had no idea that was there. So it's very important that we get this message very clearly. So if you want to do something, you have the ability and the talent to carry it out. Otherwise, you'd not have it in the first place. And by going after it, it causes you to draw something from yourself that you didn't even know was there. So you start to uncover and discover what you're truly capable of. And the only way you're going to do it is that you decide where you're going and you take action to go after it. So guys, the main thing here is taking action. If you don't take action, nothing's going to happen. If you know how to reach your goal, then that goal is not doing for you what goals are designed to do. If you're really going to accomplish something, you're going to need to be inspired by going after something you really want. It's going to have to come from inside you. What this means is, you're going after something that you desire. So desire is an unexpressed possibility within seeking expression outside of you. In other words, through you, outside of you, and through your actions. So what you have to do is go after something that inspires you, something that you want and something that excites you. I love what Bob said. The only prerequisite of a goal is that you simply have to want it. That's it, you just simply have to want it. Now, how simple is that? It doesn't matter how big it is or how it compares to others, you know, or what they are doing or what their goals are, it doesn't matter. So, you know, that's the mistake that we all keep making. We set goals that will please other people. We're always worried about what other people will think of us, isn't it? You know, if they found out what would they think of our goals? You know, we would not even have to worry because, you know, we're already setting goals based on what other people like. 
So is that how you guys want to set your goals? So it has to come from inside you. It has to come from within you, something that you really want. That's the only prerequisite for a goal. So from Bob's training, you learned about three types of goals, the A, B, and C. Now, most people get tripped up on the fantasy. You know, fantasy doesn't sound logical to us. So, you know, they get tripped up because they have to set this. So let me give you guys an example. You know, if you're making 5 million a year, and if you want to make 10 million a month, Now you're setting yourself up for failure if this goal is not coming to and through you. Don't make the mistake of taking someone else's goal. Like someone telling you what they think you should do. It has to come from you. Your goals are your ones. Guys, please remember that. It's what you really want. They come from your imagination. They're originated through your desires and that's a C-type goal. So as long as it meets the two criteria that I mentioned, you've never done it before and it causes you to grow, then you're good to set your goal. So it's very important for you to go after your ones. So I'd like to make a clarification regarding purpose, vision and goals. You know, a lot of people confuse the three, purpose, vision, and goals. So what's the difference? Your purpose is simply waking up every morning to doing what you love to do. That's how you live on purpose. Now, how many of you are actually doing what you love to do on a daily basis? If you are doing what you love to do on a daily basis, please put one in the chat. then your vision is a picture of what your life looks like. Your future, you know, a month from now, three months from now, six months from now. So your vision, so your vision is how you see your life picturing out. You know, it can be anything, three months, six months from now, a year from now. So the further your vision is, the higher you need to be thinking so that you can see further up. So think of a skyscraper building. The higher up you want to go, the higher you need to look, isn't it? So in order to get this vision, you have to hit goals along the way. So goals are targets that are leading to fulfill or create that vision for your life and for you to live on purpose. So you can start with a 30-day goal, a 90-day goal, or a six-month goal. But I would recommend a 90-day goal because those lead you to do something bigger. So a good example is that, you know, if you decide to, let, let's say if you decide on January 2023 that you want to earn a million by the end of 2023. So let's say you decide that by 31st December 2023, you want to earn a million. So you can break down your goal into 90-day into chunks, let's say of 250,000 because those give you four quarters. So four chunks of 250,000. Or you can say that you will earn 150,000 in the first 90 days and then 250,000 in the second 90 days and so on. So until it adds up to a million by end of the year. So 90 day chunks is what is recommended so that it adds up to the final goal. The worksheets in thinking into results are an essential part of the system because they are meant to challenge you to immediately apply the lessons that you have learned. So I hope all of you had your worksheets open because we are going to be referring to them as I speak. I had sent them to all of you via email, so I hope you all have them open. It's very easy to skip or procrastinate the worksheets, but the worksheets is where the shifts really happen. You ask very critical questions that you get you thinking about the principles in, thinking into results. It's the worksheets that make the magic happen. So your paradigm is going to bring a lot of resistance. So, you know, I'm sure when uh, some of you had a look at the worksheets, you know, you, you felt uncomfortable. Maybe some of you started getting headaches. So that's your paradigm. 
it brings resistance by saying things like, oh, that's a really tough question, you know, can I really answer this? You know, it gives you, it gives you all kinds of excuses and stories. That's what your paradigm does. So as I had mentioned, your paradigms are your habitual ways of doing things. These habitual behaviors make us get certain results. Now you'll realize that, you know, when you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you keep getting the same results. But it's your paradigm that wants you to stay where you are. So the paradigms come from ideas that have been drilled in our minds over the years. So when a new idea is introduced to your mind, your paradigm naturally resists it because it's its job to keep you where you are at the moment. It wants you to stay comfortable. So I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that, you know, that whenever somebody, if, when someone spoke to you about a new idea in the past, you know, you, you felt that slight discomfort that, you know, why are they saying that? What is this about? Put a seven in the chat if any of you have experienced that in the past. So that's your paradigm. That's not you. You know, as a spirit, you are perfect in your sense. So it's your paradigm that does that. So back to the worksheets now. So I was talking to you about the questions, you know, that your paradigm will put a fight. So they're not tough questions. It's your paradigm saying that it's a tough question. It's your current level of awareness suggesting that it's a difficult question. It's your way of learning that says it must be difficult or it must be hard that will cause you to procrastinate. So you just need to decide, guys. Take a pen out and just work on the sheets. So you can do that right after this session. This is an essential part of thinking into results. Otherwise, it's just another course, you know, that you're listening to or watching. It won't make a difference. You know, you, can, you could learn, you could grow, and you could make moves with other material. But if you really, really want to make a shift, it's always in the action. In the context of thinking into results, it's doing the exercises and then taking action steps that come from these exercises. So there are four questions to get you started. So if you, if you refer to the copy of the handbook that I had shared, the first question is on beliefs. So that should be on page three. A major obstacle to getting you anywhere are your beliefs. You know, beliefs about if you can do it, if you have the talents and abilities, if you can find the resources you need, and your belief in yourself. You know, it's, it's always around resources, you know, that will I find X, Y, Z, you know, I need to do X, Y, Z, will I find the resources to do it or not? And also a lot of us, you know, don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe we can do something different. So we have many conflicts going on, you know, inside us. So what you really want is contradictory to your beliefs. So you feel resistant, you know, and you make up excuses and apparently they're justifiable even with evidence and facts. You ask people for their opinion, what they think, you know, what their beliefs and perceptions are. So their beliefs and perceptions and their image of you get in the way of what it is that you want. Most of your beliefs were handed to you and you adopted to them. So you draw conclusions and you make decisions based on your beliefs. When you are a child, you believed you could do anything. The sky was the limit. How wonderful was that? Because we were not aware of all these beliefs. They were still being drilled into us. So, you know, we believed we could do anything. Don't we wish we could still be that way? But over the years, you were handed these beliefs about yourself and everything else around you, you adopted. And that's the way you went. So based on this discussion, I encourage you to answer the questions. You know, I'd say go a bit deeper. Pick one belief that conflicts with what you want. Think about that one thing that you want to do and pick one silly belief that was handed over to you as a child or even in the recent past that you think would be getting in the way right now? How would your life change if you change that belief? How do you change your beliefs? The exact same way they were drilled into you. Beliefs were drilled into you through repetition, through conversations, by being yelled at, 
I think some of, some of us were even beaten. <laughs> I'm sure you remember. We, we all had our own experiences around this. Some of you are criticized. Some of you are encouraged, some both. Guys, the good news is you don't have to worry about that anymore. When you are little and you are taking in information, you, know, you are taking it so easily and effortlessly. There was no real resistance until you started developing your own intellect. You know, when you developed your own intellect, you, know, you came up and said, I don't really agree with this. And, you know, and you'd fight back and of course, you know, the people who gave you those beliefs would fight back. But it doesn't take much effort to drill in new beliefs. What it takes is repetition. So when you answer these questions, you'll feel really uncomfortable because your beliefs will try to come back as you try to shell them off with this exercise. Now, some of you are, you're not even comfortable with the way you're living but you seek a sense of comfort by staying where you are. So this is what your beliefs do as you attempt these exercises. They, they want to come back. You know, they'll come back and talk to you and tell you, no, you can't do X, Y, Z. You know, you're not capable. So if you look at the first question, you know, most people don't even have goals. Now I'm talking about page eight. If you refer to page eight on the workbook, you know, most people don't even have goals. They have action points. A goal is simply what you want. So all you have to do is convert your want into a goal through decision. You don't have to know the whole way. You just decide that you're going to go for it. All it needs is a decision that you're going to go for it. So, you know, sometimes you just have to start like, you know, for instance, when you're driving and you know your destination, but you just figure it out on the way how you'll get there. You don't always know what route you're going to follow, right? But when you're going to a certain place, you know where you're headed, but you figure out the way as you start, as you start your drive. So make sure you have a destination. You just have to decide where you want to be. It's simply a target that you want to hit by a certain time. So I'd encourage you all to think about, you know, where, do, where is it that, for instance, you want to be, let's say, by end of September or by end of the year? So what you can do is, you know, list your personal ones and your professional ones. Now, all this is on the workbook that I had shared with you. So it's a simple brainstorming session. You know, have fun with it. Let your imagination wander. Don't think about the house. You know, just write it down. Just make a laundry list of everything that you want. So you don't have to think of the how. Just write everything that you could possibly want. Then when you move to question three, you, you have to pick one personal goal and one professional goal. So out of the laundry list that you made for the professional and personal ones, just pick one thing in your professional life, life that you really want and pick one in your personal list that you really, really want. But guys, be very careful about the ones that you pick because you have to make sure that your two goals aren't taking you in different directions. So from each of the ones, we are going to convert it into a goal. But you have to make sure that they don't take you in two different directions. Now, what do I mean by that? So I'll demonstrate that with an example. So you know, if your personal goal is to travel all over the world, for instance, but if your professional goal is to open a store in your city and physically be there to serve your customers, then you'll be sending out conflicting messages to the universe. Why is that? Because it's not physically possible to be serving clients in one city and be traveling all over the world at the same time, right? So what happens in this case? Because the message to the universe is conflicting, you may end up getting neither. And then you may think, that the system does not work. But you have to make sure that you set up your goal very correctly and precisely. So you want to think about your goal from the end. So you have to write it in the present tense as if you have already achieved it. When we write down a goal as being in the future and we get emotionally involved with it as being in the future, it stays in the future.
So I'm just going to demonstrate an example. Now, this is what a goal card looks like. So I'll be sharing a copy of this goal card with everybody here in the next 48 hours via email. So what you can do is you can print out this goal card and you can write down your goal on this goal card. Now, this is the exact format that led Bob Proctor to his success. So you can see that the goal card starts with the words, I'm so happy and grateful now that. So I'll give you a very simple example of a goal. You know, you can say something like, so if you are looking to earn, let's say 10 million by end of this year, you can say, I am so happy and grateful now that I earn 10 million by 31st December, 2022. I am healthy, wealthy, happy. So note that it's written in the present tense. So I'm just going to repeat that. I am so happy and grateful now that I earned 10 million by 31st December, 2022. I am healthy, wealthy, happy. If you want to associate your goal to a specific source of income, like, you know, you could be running a business, you could be having a job, th that, that works, but you can even leave it open. So, you know, if your main goal is just to make a certain amount of money by a certain time, then you can leave it open because you don't want to limit yourself to just certain channels of income. Because when the universe sees 10 million, it's going to open up different avenues for you to earn that income. But if you are looking at a specific uh, business growth, or if you want to get promoted in your job and earn the money through that, you can specify that you'd like to earn money through that specific job or business. So what should you do after writing your goal? Engage with your goal. Goals are not just for writing and forgetting about them, right? You should just not forget about the goals. So I would recommend that you read out your goal every morning when you wake up and right before you sleep. So once you've established your goal and you've written it down on this goal card, read it out to yourself twice a day as you look at yourself in the mirror. So once every morning, as soon as you wake up and right before you fall asleep at night and get into the feeling of having achieved it already. You know, how do you feel when you achieved your goal? Are you happy? Are you excited? Are you relieved? Are you, I don't know, are you, are you overwhelmed? <laughs> Some people get overwhelmed, you know, when they think about what they've achieved already. So get into that feeling. Getting emotionally involved with your goal is one of the first steps that you need to take after establishing your goal. So with time, you know, this will cause your mind to give you ideas towards your goal. So identifying your wants and writing your goal is only the first step towards getting what you want. Actually achieving your goal is another process. You know, your paradigms always put up a fight when you try and do something that you've never done before. So there are 11 more steps to achieving your goal. So guys, this brings us to the end of the presentation and thank you so much. So I would be happy to show you the rest of the steps on what you should do in order to achieve your goal. So please get in touch with me so that I can show you how to actually start working towards your goal. And I talked about the system called thinking into results. This is the system that helps you to achieve your goal and to shift your paradigm in order to get it is to get what you want. So get in touch with me. My contacts are on the screen and uh, I'm happy to let you know that I launched my website a couple of days ago. So you can also book a call directly through my website. I hope you enjoyed this session and I was very happy to